In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own battery pack for the RE16S 16mm camera. Now I built this battery pack and designed it myself to use replaceable battery cells. So if any of these cells go bad, you can just pop a new one in and continue using the same battery pack. I made all of the design files available freely online. If you have a 3D printer, you can follow along. I'm going to go through all the steps that it takes to build this, so stick around. So last month, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole, figuring out how I could develop a battery pack for my 16 millimeter cameras. Now, it so happened that I kept acquiring these old 16 millimeter cameras, which I love shooting on, but with them would come these old battery packs that just didn't work, or were dead. And so I wanted to come up with a way that we could use replaceable cells. So this pack, specifically for the RE16S, uses AA batteries. Now that's great because you can use these rechargeable double A's that you also use in some of your other, you know, household components or cameras like the Nikon F4, which uses four of these and it's flash, the SB800. So with those same batteries, when you're not shooting 16 millimeter film, you can put them into these other components and still make use of them. So this pack doesn't charge anything. It's just for powering your camera. You take the batteries out and put them into a normal, charger that will distribute the charge properly for each of the batteries. If you want to buy one of these, you can buy it at pluriboom.com. I've started to produce these all myself. I use locally made filament from Vancouver, Washington, and at, as much as I can, I use the best components that I can use. So for larger cameras like the Eclair NPR or the Eclair ACL, or maybe even some Atoms, I built another battery pack. Now, this battery pack is powered by four 18650 protected lithium ion cells. Now, it's a bit more complicated of a pack because there's a voltage regulator in here, which is adjustable. So you could actually use it for the RE16S or for the Eclair NPR by just making a quick adjustment underneath the hood here. And you can actually use the voltage readout on the side to make that adjustment. So because this is a bit more complicated, it costs a bit more, um, but it's also available on pluriboom.com. But today, we're gonna to be focusing on this battery pack, specifically for the RE16S. Let's get into that now. So here are the parts that you'll need. Eight negative battery contacts, eight positive battery contacts, super glue, eight M3 eight millimeter Allen head screws, eight M3 threaded inserts, two M3 tapered Allen head screws, and two M3 nuts, a four pole female XLR chassis mount connector, some solder 22 gauge stranded wire, optionally some white paint, and if you have a spot welder, some five millimeter nickel strip. For tools, you'll need a soldering iron, an M3 Allen wrench, a wire stripper, a multimeter, and if you have one, a spot welder for batteries. There are five parts to be 3D printed, and you can print all of these at a 0.28 millimeter layer height. The link for these files is in the video description below. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna remove the supports from the 3D printed parts, and there's five parts here. And there's only gonna be a few supports. There's some on the bottom of the battery holder. There's a couple at the, the port entries for the, for the container. There's these small little pieces here. And then there's uh, a support that runs along the base of this along here. Now the next step is that you're gonna want to glue the finger spring onto the actual lid. Now the, the super glue that I use um, is this Gorilla Super Glue Gel. I really like this stuff. It dries quickly uh, and it forms a bond that's stronger than any kind of plastic you could use it on. So it will never end up really breaking on the point where you super glued it. So before you do that, you wanna take the piece here that has the tapered edges and you're gonna wanna try and force it in, get it to kind of fit well, and that's where you want it to be. So you just kind of get it to fit in there and then you can pop it back out and now it's kind of prepped. Um, and you want to take off the super glue here and you're just going to apply a layer of super glue and not, you don't need a lot, uh, just, just into this area and then you'll put it in there and you'll hold it down at that same angle I showed you for about 40 seconds and then we'll just set that piece aside. Now this part is optional, but I like to do it because it makes it look a little bit more professional and if you end up buying one of these from the website, it will be uh, with these colored polarity markings. Um, and I just use this white paint. This is a, a neopaque paint from Jacquard, which is a nice paint because it's, it's sort of flexible once it dries. And in a case like this, where you're constantly taking in and out batteries, it's nice to have a resilient paint like that. Um, and 
What I usually do, and this is sort of after a lot of like trial and error figuring out the best way to do this, um, is that I will, I will actually use a small syringe to draw up the paint, and then I will just fill in each of the little polarity markings as best as I can with the paint, and it dries pretty quickly, um, but it just ends up making it look a bit nicer. The next step is inserting the battery contacts. So you need eight positive contacts and eight negative contacts, and they each slide, I designed this to be able to fit these contacts as sort of a press fit. So you don't need any glue or anything to hold the contacts in. And you just go through and you do that with every single one. Um, and then you'll have them all sort of protruding out the back here. And then we can move on to the next step. All right, so next what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold over each of the pins on the side that doesn't have a feed out. So that part's pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of times I'll double check just to make sure that they're fully pushed in before I bend these pins. But yep, you just fold them over. There's, there's a couple of options for connecting these. Uh, so you can very easily solder them using a uh, 22 gauge wire. Um, I do a lot of these and I, and I, you know, am obviously making them to sell to people. So it's much faster for me to uh, actually use pure nickel strips to connect these in the same way that you might connect an actual battery pack. Take your, your trusty little spot welder here and you go. And it will do a quick little spot weld for you. And I do a couple on each one just to make sure that they're, they're sturdily on there. So this is kind of what you're looking for here, uh, where the battery term terminals are sort of like alternatively being welded together. Um, and if you're doing that with wire, it's gonna look the same, just with wire there. Um, the last step here is that uh, we wanna look on the front here. And so this one is a positive wire. So we'll wanna take some red wire and solder it to this terminal here and run it out. And on this side, it's negative. Uh, so we'll want to uh, take a black wire uh, and run it out as well. So now that we have our battery pack piece in sort of a completed state with all the contacts and, and the lead wires coming out, this is a good time to actually test that all of our connections are good. So we're gonna wanna take some fresh batteries uh, that have been charged recently and we're going to want to measure them with a multimeter. Now if they were just charged recently you'll probably get something close to 11 volts uh, that drops down very quickly to around 9.6 volts but uh, what you want to do is you want to set your multimeter to the right voltage measurement and, and use the right lead connection and you're going to just connect these two here and you'll see that it's actually at 11.06 volts right now. So we're good and we can move forward with the rest of the design. So next you wanna take these heat set threaded inserts and insert them into these holes, which should be printed just big enough for them to sort of fit with their, their tapered edge uh, in there properly. Yeah, the, the brand of, of threaded insert that I use is, is Ruth X brand. The, the goal is just to, to be able to make this a product that's that's reusable and fixable so people can take it apart and modify it and change it in the future and it's not just this glued together piece of crap. One of the important things about these threaded inserts is that you have a soldering iron where the temperature can be changed by varying degrees. And what you want to set it to is around 230, 235 degrees Fahrenheit because we printed this in PLA. You could use a different, uh, you know, uh, filament, but then you'd have to change what temperature you use. Usually about 10 or 15 degrees above the filament that you use. So we'll turn on the soldering iron and you basically just want to push these inserts in and what you got to do is uh, start to push it in there. And there you can see it just kind of quickly sunk down in there and I'll use this tool to kind of help me separate it out because otherwise it would just pull right back out. So this is about what you're looking for once you get all of the threaded inserts put in. You want each of the inserts to sit flush with the surface that they're a part of and not protrude too, too much. And what this will allow us to do is to actually mount some of these pieces like our, our battery pack that we just built 
um, in a way that allows us to fix it and replace it later, um, to mount the lid on top of the container. To do that, you need four of these M3 screws. They're eight millimeters long. Um, and you'll just run them straight through there and just go through one by one and screw them. Now, I, when I made these models, I tried to make them with enough clearance to, to be able to, to work well right out of the box, but it's possible that your printer will be slightly different. All right, so we're on the home stretch now. One of the last things that you're gonna do is you're gonna run these wires through this hole here, and then you're gonna wanna trim them down um, probably about to here or maybe a little bit farther. It's kind of annoying to have to solder through this hole, but that's kind of what you gotta do. Um, and the way to sort of understand how to wire these XLR uh, female inputs is that uh, the one is gonna be the negative contact, the black, and the four, the one on the opposite side of it, is going to be positive contact. So we'll set up the soldering iron and we'll, we'll make those two quick solders. A nice thing to do when, when you're uh, making connections like this is to use a little bit of shrink wrap. And so I like to slide those on before I do this, otherwise it's basically impossible. So just, just get your shrink wrap on there ahead of time. If you're doing shrink wrap, it's not required, but I like to do it and uh, just kind of slide them over the soldered pieces at the end. So after we have this soldered onto the XLR connector, we're just gonna push it in here and we will secure it using these tapered M3 screws with the M3 nuts. Now this part's a little finicky. The top one's really easy to get. The bottom one will probably frustrate the heck out of you, but it's totally doable. And you just kind of got to use one finger to hold the nut down while you kind of feel for it on the other side of this one. And uh, it doesn't take too long once you kind of get the hang of it, but uh, yeah, that is, that is one of the frustrating things about this. So get those two screws in there and then we'll move on to just connecting everything up. All right, so the very last step here is to take the lid, secure it on top of the whole piece, take the snap lid and put it on. So we're just gonna use some M3 Allen head screws to secure this in here. And uh, the holes may be a little bit uh, wonky because they do have to be printed with support. So a lot of times I'll take a little, little tool and I'll just clear them out just to make sure that it's easy to screw through and uh, we'll come back and we'll test the camera. All right, so we're basically done. All we have to do is stick our batteries in and test that our, our snap lid fits cleanly. And sometimes you'll have to kind of work it in and out a couple of times before it becomes easy to snap in and out. Um, but this one isn't too bad. So it snaps closed. And all that's left to do is to basically plug it in and see if it works. So, and there you go. We've got a running RE16S that runs off of replaceable, rechargeable AA batteries. So thank you guys for watching. Again, if, if you don't wanna build one of these yourself, you can always buy it from our website at pluriboom.com. And hopefully I'll be able to build some other cool things uh, that all of them will be open source and all the designs will always be free and I will always try to make a video to explain how you can make these because the more people shoot and film, the better.